All right. So um, this is cool. I can see what it's filming. I can see that I've got an audio level. Uh, uh, right. Um, and I can see that it is recording, which is kind of nice. Um, okay. So uh, uh, in that case, since it is recorded and it will go on, on YouTube, um, I uh, will use the subjunctive. I may have thrown snowballs at cars when I was in fifth grade. <laughs> A lot. <laughs> okay. And our main target for snowball throwing was you guys, specifically high school boys. Because high school boys get mad when you hit their car because they like, like back in my day it was sort of a big thing to get your own car and soup it up, right? And some snot-nosed little fifth grader hitting your car with a snowball would make you mad and you'd get out and you'd chase them, yes? <laughs> you guys are fast, but we're small. We're fifth graders and we fit inside that hollow hedge. We don't have to duck down. We can run full tilt through the hedge and we can disappear through those little holes in the hedge every so often. And each hole leads into maybe another hedge or it leads into like someone's the back of someone's storage shed or something like that, right? Our final thing that we would do, I and mean, we had just a whole rabbit warren of trails that we knew that you didn't know and you had to figure out and that slowed you down. Our final thing was that we could get back into the woods and we would cross, we called it the moat. But it was just like a, like a Grand Canyon type erosion problem that was through this woods. It was a ravine that was like 10 feet deep with blackberries in it and mud and like muddy sides. And in the winter in Iowa, everything's just muddy and snowy and nasty. And we would run across a plank and we'd lift the plank up. And, w and only one person chased us. That was like some drug guy with like <laughs> tattoos all over him, some kind of freakish looking guy, actually chased us and screamed at us from a distance of like 20 feet away. It was just like, blah, 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 right? And we just scared the crap out of her. We just like, <laughs> you know, right? Everybody else would just sort of like sort of chase us, but then we'd lose them, right? Yeah, kind of a thing. Okay, until the day of the, the, the story that I'll tell you is, and I don't think we did it after that. I think after this, the other thing that made us sort of stop was we hit a car and uh, we scared the heck out of some old people and then, yeah, that was bad, you know, it was like, oh, okay, this isn't a good thing to do, right? You know, but um, th this, this incident nearly cured us of the whole thing, right? We were, th a, a car came by and this was like a souped up muscle car, I don't even know, like maybe a Chevelle or something like that, but I'm not sure, right? Comes by, it's all like primer black, right? It's got like some custom suspension, the back is all souped up, right? And as it came by, you know, I had like dice in the window kind of a thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah? As it came by, I noticed that the wind wing was not fastened, that it was not closed. Now, do you guys know what a wind wing is? And old cars, old cars had little triangular windows that took up the front part of the drive, like the driver's side, passenger side window. They were triangular windows and you could flip them and the leading edge, I believe, came into the car and you could flip them around and actually scoop air from the outside. So it, they were so cool. You no know cars have them now and, and, and they're, they're the worst for it, I, I swear, right? You could drive down the road on a hot day and have wind hitting you at 60 miles an hour through those wind wings, bumblebees and all, right? They just air from outside just came unfiltered into the car, yes? They were, they were awesome. They were also, by the way, how you broke into your car if you forgot your keys. Right? If you locked your keys in the car, the wind wing, if you wiggled it enough, would, the little gimpy latch would come unlatched or it was broken. You just reach in and unlock the car, right? Okay? Um, so uh, kind of a keyless entry system, as it were, right? So um, as this car drove by, I noticed that the wind wing was unlatched. Now, if you think about it, the wind wing is this sort of triangular window, the, the vertical axis. It spins around a vertical axis, right? And if you hit the trailing edge of it behind the pivot, you'll close the wind wing, and if you hit the front edge, it'll open the wind wing and the snowball will enter the car, which is the holy grail of snowball at car <laughs> combat, right? You know? Now that's a small target. That's a very small target. That's like, you're picturing this window is like this big, kind of a thing, right there about like that. Here's the pivot point. The, the part I've got to hit is this big to flip it open and the snowball goes in the car, yes? Okay. So uh, there I am, I've got my target, the car goes by, I've got, I, uh, instead of hitting like several snowballs, I take my time, I've got one in my hand, it's, I take my best one. It's a, wetter, a, wa a wet, watery, icy, slushish ball, right? I throw it, I see it going through the air on target, I see it spinning through the air, in my mind anyway, I see it, okay? With little droplets coming off of it, it hits the wind wing smack, right, right where it should. The wind wing pops open, the snowball enters the car. Okay, it goes all over everybody in the car, I'm sure. It was like some kids said they saw it like 
two of my friends were there. They said they saw it in the back window of the car, <laughs> which I somewhat doubt, you know. Okay, the car goes, <laughs> right? I remember the sandy crunch of its tires skidding on the, the they put sand on the streets and, and salt, right? Scourge, and then it took off. Sometimes they do that. You just have to live with it, you know, you know. So, so there we are, you know, and we, we start throwing snowballs at more cars, right, you know. Okay, well, okay, no. The guy in that car was old. He was like 30. <laughs> That's scary, right? Because high school kids probably won't kill you. But a 30-year-old who gets out of the car might kill you. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's really scary. An old person's chasing you, right? What he does is he parks over by Indian Creek Apartments and he walks back. He walks back. He walks down the alley. He's walking down the alley. He comes up from behind us. That's the way we run. We go that way. He comes up behind us. He's cut us off. All there is is there's nowhere to go. What are we going to do? We're going to go down the street, right? We could go down the street either way and there's nothing. Right? Or we can go straight ahead. So we go straight ahead. We go away from them. Well, we're, we live on 2nd Avenue. We run across the Orthodontist parking lot. This is very bad. The old guy is fast. He's faster than us. He's closing on us as we run across this open ground. We need to get into stuff, right? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. You picturing this? Okay. Well, after 1st Avenue, after 2nd Avenue is 1st Avenue. Picture Pacific Highway. Four lanes, busy, stoplights, refuge lane in the middle. Picturing this? Right? Only it's wintertime, so it's like got slushy snow on it, yes? Cars are going by, right? We just run. We just run out. And, you know, our parents told us not to do that, but we just do it. Crazy guys chasing us, right? We're running away from death, right? <laughs> Off we go. It, we hit a break in the traffic. I look back. That guy does one of those things you do in the movies. You know, like you see people running out and cars are going and stopping, kind of a thing, right? Cars are skidding to avoid this guy. He just runs after us. He's gaining on us. <coughs> this is bad, right? He keeps chasing us. He doesn't give up. We run, right? Right there on First Avenue, there's this strip mall, kind of this horrible thing of, you know, just like this and the oil change place. And, and then we, right where we were was the old car wash that had gone out of business and they just left it there. It was abandoned, like an abandoned car wash. I remember running through where the cars get washed. Yeah? A beeline, right? I'm running through there, right? And I remember looking and like seeing the wires hanging down for where like the controls were, right? I don't know why you remember these things, right? You know? But when you're close to death, you, you're, <laughs> right? You know? Then I ran off the back of that, just straight line, right? There's, I remember there were little traffic bollards painted yellow and a little you know, a curb, like a mini curb to keep cars from like going off in the yard. And then I, run, I jumped through an a, 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 a arborvita hedge, yeah? I jumped through the arborvita hedge, you know, purposely picking a spot where I know I can make it through. You know, one of those things where you dive through the hedge? Somewhat surprisingly, the, the yard on the other side was three feet lower, <laughs> right? I stumble, but I keep going, yeah? Rob emerges, my friend. Rob Struve was with me. I think, I think David went the other way. He split off from us, and, and the guy started chasing us too, right? Okay. Rob Struve and I, Rob is goes through. He's already through. He's ahead of me, right? We land on this lawn. As I'm running across the lawn, I have this random thought, okay, that this lawn would be a killer place to live because you could set up a hockey rink, right? Because one side has a retaining wall three foot high, right? So your pucks are going to bounce off that wall. You can just take a hose and spray your backyard down and make a nice skating rink, kind of like this, right? Yeah, that's, that's why the Midwest is, is good. It's cold, right? Okay, and then the other side had an Arbor Vita hedge that we were running toward. You could lean sheet um, or, or a plywood up against that, right? And then you'd have boards on all sides and you could play hockey and not lose all your pucks, right? And this is a great thing, right? So I'm running. The guy emerges through the hedge, right? Random thought in my head, right? The guy emerges through the hedge behind us. We're running across the lawn, right? There's another Arbor Vita hedge ahead of us. We run through that, right? And what, I, what we didn't know, what we couldn't have known, we hadn't ever been there before, was that into the next yard was a good 15 to 20 foot retaining wall. We were running off into space, right? Boom, through the hedge. There's nothing there, right? <laughs> I, remember, I remember Rob next to me, this, this image of him falling into the darkness, right? There was the lights were behind us, were up high on posts, and they were shining down into the yard. But this retaining wall was so high that there was a shadow in that. I remember falling into the shadow, right? Falling and falling for a surprisingly long amount of time, right? Yeah? He fell first. He was always faster than me a little bit, right? He's falling first. Then I'm falling into the darkness, right? Then, because we were moving forward at a good clip, right? We're moving forward. When we hit the ground, our feet stopped moving forward, but our torsos continued moving forward. 
faceplant. 